Hello everyone and welcome to my guide of 16 things that you can do in Cornwall. So Cornwall is a gorgeous place packed with so many things to see and do and in this video I've got gardens, castles, caves, towns, surfing, stone circles, waterfalls, mines, beaches and more. So I do hope that there's something for everyone in this video so please subscribe if you do enjoy. Uh, feel free to check out some other videos on my channel. We're always traveling up and down the UK looking for the most awesome places to visit but yeah let's not waste time and uh, on with the list. So I'm gonna get straight into it and just begin with my personal favorite thing to do in all all of Cornwall and that is the Eden Project. It's just so genius and mind-blowing and it's just a completely surreal place to be. I think the Eden Project perfectly embodies pretty much what we all hope the future will be and the future will look like. In case you don't know what it is, the Eden Project opened in 2001 and it has a selection of biomes, a Mediterranean and a rainforest biome. The rainforest biome specifically is the largest indoor rainforest in the world. Is it warm here Ellie? Oh, I'm boiling. I'm boiling, it's very warm. But they have sweet potato there. But these iconic structures are essentially massive high-tech greenhouses um, but it's also full of outdoor gardens and art installations and just so much information about sustainability and nature which especially right now we need to start thinking about more and more so it's just an amazing place and I would totally suggest it uh, if you visit in Cornwall. So on to number two and continuing on with a similar theme to the Eden Project and that is the Lost Gardens of Heligan. So these are not quite as spectacular as the Eden Eden Project in my personal opinion but maybe that's just because we visited it straight after visiting the Eden Project but nonetheless a garden with a very interesting history. The gardens date back to the mid 18th century but during World War One they were pretty much forgotten about and well completely lost <laughs> hence the name Lost Gardens of Heligan. But they were rediscovered in 1990 and they are Europe's largest garden restoration project. It's just the perfect place for any nature lovers with so many interesting plants, trees, sculptures and just more walking routes than you could ever want. Look Alex, I'm on the hand. <laughs> so cool. So moving away from the theme of gardens now and onto a very iconic castle and that is Tintagel Castle. Now the next couple of points that I'm going to talk about are all in the same sort of area so it's definitely um, an area that I would recommend that you visit. So Tintagel Castle was originally built during the 13th century but people probably would have been occupying this iconic headland long before then. So this location is not only historically impressive but it is also covered in legend. Specifically the legend of King Arthur. Apparently this is the the location where King Arthur was conceived with the help of Merlin. I don't really want to know how Merlin was helping out there but it's probably best to just not ask questions. In fact the castle seems to have been built here for no other reason other than being the site of the legend. Which leads me perfectly on to my next two points. So firstly located at the very tip of this headland is the iconic King Arthur statue. And the statue itself was really awesome but the problem is in the summer when we went because this was July um, the site around the statue was constantly packed with crowds but if you are able to battle through the crowds it is an epic photo opportunity. And then located directly below Tintagel Castle is another very legendary location and that is Merlin's Cave. It's located on this gorgeous but still very busy beach. Um, the natural cave was formed by erosion from the sea and at low tide it is fully explorable. Uh, it does begin to fill up with water though at high tide so try not to get stuck in it but there were many many small caves and interesting rock formations to explore on this beach. And with Tintagel just overlooking it from the rocks above it was just so impressive and really great place to see. And so just as another really quick point before I move on from this area, the village of Tintagel itself was a really great village as well. It is home to the best Cornish pasty that I have ever had. It was just so impressive. I wish I had a picture of it that I could show you, but it took me two days to actually eat it. And I think that is a review enough of how massive and impressive this pasty was. And so with that, I will summarize the Tintagel area and uh, let's move on. So for my next point, located in southeast Cornwall this time, and that is Galitha Falls. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. So it's located in the Galitha Falls Nature Reserve and you can explore some amazing woodland with so many interesting things hidden inside it, including some of these mystified old and abandoned structures. 
And if you know me, you will know that I cannot get enough of old and abandoned buildings, structures, anything. So I really enjoyed exploring around this place, uh, just trying to see what I can find. The river itself is so picturesque. It just kind of cascades through the woodland and it's just an amazing place to explore, even in the complete rain like when we went, because at the end of the day, we're holidaying in England, there's gonna be rain at least one day, so there you go. So now heading directly south of Galitha Falls because on the south coast of Cornwall there is an absolutely gorgeous village and fishing harbour which is called Polpero. So this place is just idyllic. The village itself is just so scenic and home to some really great independent shops to explore and as well as restaurants and pubs to eat and drink. But if you walk through the entire village towards the coast you will see some of the iconic dramatic Cornwall coastlines. You can walk out pretty much all of the way to the tip of these rocks and especially in the evening it's just such a peaceful place to be and just sit, relax, contemplate life and you can even walk as far up or down the coastline as you want from here. On to the second village and port now on the list. We're moving a little bit down the coastline towards the tip of Cornwall, but not too far from Polpero is located the village of Charlestown. So Charlestown has remained relatively unchanged since the 18th century, and I think that's the reason it feels like a very unique place to be. It kind of feels like you step back a little bit in time when you're exploring this place. And there's some really amazing places to eat with some really tasty food overlooking all of the boats. And you can even eat on a boat if you want. I mean, who doesn't love that? And now heading down further into Cornwall, it was only a matter of time before I started talking about the incredibly epic beaches of Cornwall. But firstly, an amazing find which we found on our way down to the beach. Now you may know that Cornwall is littered with tin mines. They are literally everywhere. You can't miss them when you're going through Cornwall. And this specific tin mine that you can see here is definitely the best we found in terms of location, uh, size, and just how much was remaining of it. This is called Wheelcoats Tin Mine. So the mine is located on a walk down to the beach I was talking about, which is Chapel Porth Beach. You go straight past this mine if you park at the Wheelcoats Car Park, which is a great park park park? That's a good word, isn't it? Wheelcoats Car Park, which is actually a really reasonable park. I said it again, park park. Car park. <laughs> car park, which is actually a really reasonable car park and it's located very close to the beach. So Chapel Porth Beach is a great beach. It's just so scenic and it had epic waves when we went. So probably great for surfing, although I'm pretty sure every beach in Cornwall is pretty great for surfing. So it's not like I can narrow that down. Uh, we didn't actually do too much surfing on this trip. So maybe we need to head back this summer and uh, do some surfing. Ellie, you agree? Yes. Good. Yes. <laughs> That's good, isn't it? Yes. yes. <laughs> so helpful, good input. <laughs> So now onto the next group of um, sort of ideas that I have for you and we're going back in ancient history this time because Cornwall has so much ancient history littered throughout it. So it's a shame to visit uh, if you are a history buff and miss out some of them. And there's nothing more peaceful I think than going out on an evening in search for some historic sites in the middle of nowhere. From this video here you can actually see what I was talking about earlier where you know, the tin mines are literally everywhere. And these tin mines were located on the walk towards the Hurlers Stone Circle. So the Hurlers are a group of three stone circles actually, and they are in an area which is full of interesting historical sites, which just make it the perfect walk. If you carry on walking on from the Hurlers, you get to this very spectacular tour, which is called Cheese Ring. Um, unbelievably, it is completely natural, somehow. Uh, local legends suggest that it was the location of a rock throwing contest between a man and a giant, which may seem far-fetched at first, but I guess, how else are you gonna explain these rocks? At sunset, it is the perfect place to hike and to be honest, the perfect place for photography as well. I would recommend it to anyone who is interested in historical sites like this. So now on to one more ancient historical site before I move on, and that is Trethevi Quoit, which is, what a fun word to say that is. So this is one of these locations where you're forced to ask yourself the question, just how did they get those rocks into place? Hey Ellie. Yes. Cool rocks. A big rock and a cool rock. <laughs> It's a very small area, but it's completely free to visit. And I think it would perfectly summarize your day of ancient exploration around this area. Okay, so now we're getting towards the end of the video. Finally, I feel like this may be very long. We'll see how much I can cut down my rambling and information. Um, but I thought I'm gonna finish the video off with a bang because these last two locations are pretty epic. The first of which is St. Michael's Mount. 
So St. Michael's Mount is a tidal island, so that means you can walk across the causeway at low tide, but then at high tide you do need to get on a boat to get back. Which was very fun, as the weather on the day we went was, well, no short of just absolutely dire. But that did not spoil it. If anything, it just added to the incredible atmosphere of the island. I think it's kind of the Cornish version of uh, Mont Saint-Michel in Normandy, um, and I think a lot of people know about that one, it's so iconic, but maybe they aren't aware that there is one in Cornwall. So you have gardens outside full of some very unique and interesting plants, and if you follow the, the pathway going up through these gardens, they lead you up to the top of St. Michael's Mount, where a castle is located. So this castle is fully refurbished and it almost acts as a museum inside with so many interesting artifacts um, with kind of small areas where you can get a peek out at the incredible views and remember where you are. Ellie, are you enjoying the view? It's very good view and very clear view. And now for the final point of the video, um, I haven't mentioned any towns yet in the video, any bigger towns, so I wanted to mention my favourite, which is Falmouth. So Falmouth is perfect for shopping, eating, drinking and exploring. I think it's the perfect place you need after all the other stuff in this video. You know, all the surfing and hiking that you've been doing, you just need a rest, you just need to chill out and I think Falmouth is a great place to do that. It's also home to one of the best burgers I've ever had, which was at this place. Um, and that's just one example of all of the interesting places that there are within Falmouth for you to explore. And with that, I will finish off the video. I feel like it might be a quite a long video, um, but to be honest, there was so much more that I could have added to the list. I was trying to condense it down so the video wasn't two hours long. So these are my highlights. Um, and I haven't actually explored around the very tip of Cornwall yet, hence why there wasn't any locations in this video um, from the very tip of Cornwall. Uh, so feel free to let me know in the comments because I'm hoping to maybe get there this summer. So yeah, let me know in the comments if there's any way you suggest around there that um, I missed off the list and also just let me know if there's anything else that you feel that I missed off the list because Cornwall's amazing and I'm sure there are some. So yes, please subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Please feel free to check out any more of my other videos on the channel and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.